The use of air or vapour barriers has been around for many years. The idea behind this type of barrier is to prevent air and the moisture within it to move through a building envelope. At the same time, it prevents the energy, heating or cooling from leaving the building. An air or vapour barrier is always installed on the inside of the building. To create an effective barrier, it is necessary to pay attention to the smallest detail and to make sure it is continuous. The goal of advanced air sealing is to create a continuous air barrier. Air barrier material can be anything that blocks the passage of air, plywood, plaster or plastic sheets. If one piece of air barrier material could surround an entire house, then one piece would be all that you'd ever need. However, it is not that easy. Sheet material such as plywood and plaster already covers over 90% of most homes. To make the air barrier continuous, the joints between sheets must be sealed, along with any penetrations. Around the world, two approaches have been recommended for creating this continuous air barrier. The poly approach and the airtight drywall approach. The poly approach and where it all started. The first approach for achieving a continuous air barrier is called the polyethylene air vapour barrier. PAVB. It came to the United States from the Canadian R2000 building program and from similar techniques used in factory built houses in Sweden. In the PAVB approach, large sheets of polyethylene cover the inner surface of the exterior shell of the building, except over doors and windows. At joints and seams, the poly is carefully lapped and sealed. Polyethylene sheets function as the air barrier and as the moisture diffusion retarder. Using the same material to serve two functions is supposed to save costs. To ensure continuity, connector strips of poly must be installed during framing. Later, larger sheets covering the bulk of the walls and ceilings can be lapped and sealed to the strips already in place. The most common areas requiring connector strips are the intersections of the interior partitions with exterior walls and ceilings. The strips often take a beating during framing, plumbing, wiring and insulation. Any penetrations in the PAVB have to be carefully treated because polyethylene is very flexible. It requires support or solid backing in order to seal around electrical boxes and duct penetrations. In addition, there are complex tricks involved in getting a good seal around windows and door frames. A number of builders have succeeded with this approach, however many others found it too complicated. In spite of all the effort, many homes built with the technique are only slightly less leaky than they would have been without it. This result was less of a fault of the PAVB system than a lack of awareness and attention to the forced air heating systems and the multitude of minor penetrations in the building envelope. The PAVB system is more appropriate for factory built houses where the materials can be assembled in a relatively clean area and protected from the weather. In outdoor construction faced with the rain, cold temperatures and wet sawdust, most builders have difficulty carrying out the air barrier details. The airtight plaster approach. The PAVB technique never became common practice for builders of energy efficient homes around the world. While the issues of energy conservation, indoor air quality and moisture control were recognised as important, most production minded builders have been waiting for a better idea to come along. The first one arrived around 1984 and was called the Airtight Drywall Approach, AEDA. In Oz we call this Airtight Plaster Approach, APA. It's a system that tries to bring air leakage control techniques to the mainstream production builder. To overcome the problems with the PAVB system, APA splits the air barrier and diffusion retarder functions into two construction components. Moisture diffusion can be handled in a number of ways. A builder can use faced insulation, foil backed plasterboard or vapour retarder paint to protect against vapour diffusion. Because a vapour retarder's effectiveness is proportional to the amount of surface it covers, a 95% vapour retarder is about as good as a 98% retarder. It can tolerate more imperfection than an air barrier can. An air barrier needs to be able to resist air pressure differences. Several parts of the building envelope already do that, such as plasterboard walls and ceilings, and the plywood floor or slab on ground. To make an air barrier out of these different structural components, the trick is to get them to work together by systematically connecting the joints where the components meet. Builders transform the individual components into a continuous air barrier that functions almost as if it were a single piece of material. 
The plaster and the plywood subfloor serve well as air barrier surfaces, but one surface has to be connected to the other. The APA solution is a compressible gasket between the components. One gasket is placed beneath the wall plate before the wall is tipped up. Another gasket is applied to the face of the bottom plate before the plaster goes up. These two gaskets effectively carry the air barrier surface from subfloor to bottom plate to plaster. But even with APA, there have been problems and requests for a simple way. It is still necessary for the framing crew to apply gaskets between structural members during construction. And many of the air sealing tasks must still be completed before the building shell is weather tight. Bye. Uh -huh.